God self of you within. And also the fearlessness, I think, is a part of that too. Right. In fearlessness, we know that we are fully in our own power because we've always got assistance whenever we require it, if we ask for it, but we already have that within ourselves. And fearlessness comes to us in times, in my experience, exactly when we need it if you carry it with you at all times. It's always there, it's like a reciprocal agreement. Carry it with you, it'll be there, you know, whenever. And the power of choice. Because we can choose, that's taking our own power back and, and choosing, not letting other people make our choices for us. Because the power, as we've said, it's always in the now moment. So directing personal energies is about you taking responsibility for where you want those outcomes to outpicture, to be. It's part of the transduction sequence. <laughs> it's part of the way we move through things. So it's a choice every day, every time that we have that. I have a quote from Mac here. She says, choice is the most powerful tool we have. So for now, choice is not only a reality, but it becomes our saving grace. It can also become the vehicle for taking us away from our heroic probability. And that's interesting because in the uh, Bermuda workshop, as asked, how many people made choices to go in one direction or certain choices when they knew that there was a higher, better choice to make? How many of you have made choices uh, for something when you knew that there was really a better choice? <laughs> Every hand in the room. Yeah. <laughs> It's the most powerful tool we have. And see, those choices can either uh, align us with our heroic probability or take us away. Each moment, we have the power to take a step closer to our heroic probability. Getting down the heroic road requires complete ownership of the hologram. Nobody to blame but ourselves for where we're at. If we want to step in a victim mentality and say that we have that we are not a result of our prior actions, well, we can do that. That will diminish our power. However, there is a flip side to that coin as well. We can also take a stance that is victim-like too by saying we are locked into a probability by our past mistakes. Remember, oh, that's my karma. Remember that, that new age saying, oh, that's my karma. I can't help it. It's gonna happen anyway. All those uh, giving away, those little cliches that really tell us we're giving away our power. So truly the point of power is in the now moment. We are always just one choice away from the fork in the road. I used to have a sign on my desk that read, think before you think. I think I will now make one that says, choose before you choose. So in reference to your subject line, my friend, I am not troubled by choice. I embrace it. It is the way that I am going to get out of here. So let's go ahead and take a breath and then project your spark of consciousness into the code and expand it out in the code and then bring that encryption back into your body and expand it out throughout your whole body. And then speak the words, I am this now, be joy, be now as one with God. I am joy, I am now as one with God. I am this, I am. This again is going back to the now moment, but it's also experiencing stillness. How much of our daily day lives do we spend doing things? Doing, 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 so much to do, not enough time to do this, to do, instead of being. And the Manu point, the still point, is knowing stillness, being stillness, acknowledging ourselves as stillness. I love this design of the codes, I actually observed it being made by beloved Sue Climpson, because it holds 
we can all enter in with our consciousness. We can choose a part wherever we want to go, isn't it? It's like a journey within itself, you know. It's mm -hmm. a poster that's available. It's very beautiful. Isn't yeah. It? It's called the Still Point poster. Mm -hmm. And it's... And again, it's just about breathing for yourself and entering into a knowingness of being, sending your consciousness to any part, holding it there, breathing it there, being the still point, knowing yourself as the still point, so that you can bring back the still point and hold it at all times. Because when you know it, then you carry it with you. So instead of doing, you can be and do at the same time. Fully be in your power, fully co-create, fully manifest and be. Because we're all frequency holders. We're all carrying that flame, that frequency, that knowingness. And the more we anchor it and the more we hold it singularly, within our own multidimensional selves, within the shield, within workshops, within everybody that we meet, uh, universally, planetarily, and beyond. We affect and make change to recreate and be the stillness, to be the Manu. Very powerful, very powerful. You can be like laughing and still at the same time. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It's, you can laugh and have that stillness inside. What happens, because we don't know we can, and uh, we have learned to fragment our point of focus, is that it's, it has become either one or the other. We laugh and become um, kind of busy and, the, the, and, and like, ha, ah, all over the place, or we become still. When we can become, always hold that, taking the still point with you, and, and still laugh and still have fun, but you're grounded. Okay, you're, you have that sense, you're centered. I, a really simple one that came to me was that physically, if you just look at your own body right now, what you're doing with it, for some people it's quite tense, it's quite contracted, it's held. People are doing a lot with their bodies, even though they think they're sitting down and being quite relaxed. Yeah? They do quite a lot of stuff. And almost when we're on holiday on a beach lying down, that's when we feel fully relaxed. We get a sort of rhythm going where we can walk around like the locals, you know, it's really cool. <laughs> and when we get back to our jobs, it sort of becomes like that. And similarly, the still point for me is that space of complete expansion and knowingness. And the more we carry that, it affects everything yeah. that we do. Because yeah. we get into habit patterns sometimes with our own body. I find I clench my jaw not knowing I'm clenching my jaw, and then all of a sudden I'll open my mouth and it'll pop, or, or all of a sudden it'll start hurting when I try to eat because I realize I can't open my mouth very much because I've been clenching it, not realizing I'm clenching it. And that's why that six or 12 minute checkup, being mindful of, your, of what your body's doing, so that you can breathe and consciously relax to get your body out of its flight and flight, fight, fight or flight, uh, response patterns. You can, you can maybe get out of internalizing stress or even seeing it as stress instead of a gain. So we want to set a scene for you. Well, we don't, no, get back to the other one. <laughs> you were a little fast. <laughs> well, I didn't know I'd like to do. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Okay, we're in, the scene is an accountant's office, and a mother and a toddler were waiting. And like most toddlers, this young lady wanted to explore everything. Not your business. Not your business. Not your business. Yes, dear, it is. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes uh, we get into other people's business. You know, we gossip, we talk about people, and what is that? That's a, that's a judgment. It becomes a, where we're take, putting energy out. We're, we're, we're looking out horizontal. We're looking out externally. And uh, we're going into judgment of others, which means that we're really into judgment of us. Because what you see in others is really what you're seeing in you. And that's why other people, when you, if you see something you don't like, then that's maybe what we need to work on with ourselves. And if we see something that we, I mean, that we don't like, that's what we need to work on with ourselves. And if we see something that's nice, if you look at someone and say, oh boy, that she's really neat or he's really great, then you know, they're just reflecting back you. And the same thing when you say, when you look at someone and, and say, I just don't like the way her hair is. Well, that's, you know, maybe you need to look in the mirror <laughs> yourself, you know. <laughs> The, the thing is, is, is that we need to pay attention to our own business, what it is our own business. And, and maybe not gossip about others, not talk about others. Don't go horizontal. Because like Max says, a closed mouth gathers no foot. <laughs> a closed mouth gathers no foot. <laughs> and the beloved say, mindless gossip is the occupation of those most fully involved with hiding from themselves. It is supreme action of self-destruction upon which those of the dark side persuasion depend. Be mindful of what energy activity you allow your minds to dabble in. Those who bear the wisdom of a guardian do not engage their attention upon the conditions of their neighbor's house, but rather impeccably attend to the condition of their own. Think twice with the soul before permitting the lips to engage. And you know, when you talk about others, when you start gossiping, have you noticed that it's, you're not really feeling joy? You're not feeling love? You get, it's almost like the inside of you closes up. And it, all the energy goes up into a mental, and, 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 and then the mouth engages, but the soul has, is, is somewhere, but you're not engaging the soul. Where did you find that from? Um, it's from the message from the Adonai Council. And it's called, This Game is as Old as the Hills. Why are you still engaging in it? To engage or not to engage, that is the question. 3 April 2005. It was on the e group. It's in the file section. It's in yeah. the file section. It's in the file section. It's amazing, mm -hmm. the information. The Kilontic Science. The e KS, the KS e group. Okay. Okay. Should we move on? So freedom. The conscious mind plays a role in whether we experience our hologram in freedom or in chains. So get rid of have-tos. Have you ever had that? I have to do this. I should do this. I've got to do that. Who's telling you this? You know, which little voice? Is it the still small voice within? Or is it that big massive gob, as we call it in England, outside telling you what to do? Cooperation and diplomacy is about creating win-win situations for yourself as well as win-win situations for others. So when we look at the hologram and what we're creating, how much freedom are we allowing ourselves to what I call play? Play the game. If we're in a game, we're going to play it. And we're going to be good players because we're the co-creators, we're the manifestors, we're the people who are making it happen. So we're able to do this by getting rid of the have-tos and deciding what it is that we want through conscious choice, mm -hmm. through the choices that we joyfully want to experience, the things that bring joy, because they're the things that we send out in joy. So it's a conscious manifestation in its own right. It's a different game. Instead of the, g instead of the game that you're used to playing, you can change the rules of the game. Sure. You know, it's, I, had the, um, I used to have this competition thing when I was in college, and, um, and it had to do with my own self-concept of being not good enough and trying so hard, but I never seemed to, to do well. And, um, and so there was this one guy in there that, uh, and I would study real hard, and, and he would taunt me and say, ah, I beat you by this many points, right? And, and, uh, and I would just kind of tighten up. Well, one day I decided, I, had, I said, you know, if he does this again, this, th why can't I say this? And so when he came to me and said, ah, I beat you by a point. And I said, you know, Rich, I said, you really deserve it. 
I said, you did, you've studied hard, I am so glad that you did as well as you did. And he looked shocked. And he went and talked to this, uh, to this other guy, he sat down, he says, that's not how I expected her to react. He liked poking at me. He liked the fact that how I reacted. He got all that energy from me. Yeah, I had to reclaim myself. And, but it helped that I, that I realized all of a sudden I was in a pattern. I was in a go, no, go pattern. And, but for me, I had to decide how I wanted to play my part. And I changed the play on him. And I, ahead of time, I said, okay, you know, why can't I sell? Why don't we celebrate ourselves? Why can't I celebrate the fact that he did get a better score than I did? And I, and I thought, why does getting a good score, how does that make me a better God self person? Does God care if I get an A or a B? You know, does God care um, whether I studied all night and I got this score? And so, therefore, why should I have my self-respect, my, how I look at myself, why should I align that with uh, what my test scores are? Why should I name myself as the test scores, which is what I'm doing? I'm saying that I am the result, you know, I am the test, I am the book, I am this. When, and, and I'm saying I am that, really, as opposed to saying I am this. And that's one of the twists of the game we get involved in that we get caught up in and don't always, uh, because, don't always see it because we're enculturated, we're imprinted, we're trained to be that way. But we have the choice to change the game and play it by our rules. And we play it by the Christic rules, the Ionic code of, of being the pillar power, being the Christ, of saying, I think I'm going to take my ball and go home. these questions Sorry. freedom is an interesting concept when we talk about freedom what is it freedom to do certain things or be certain things there's also freedom from certain things make a list for yourself what are the things you'd like to be free from or free to do or free to be or free to experience and what are the things you'd like to be free from and you can match them up because they will go together because if you do this, it means that you're free from certain things. And to be free from this means you're free to do certain things. We can start to understand the role that our conscious mind plays in whether we experience our hologram in freedom or in chains. So what I've got here is freedom, free from. What do you want to be free from? It's a choice. It's a conscious choice that you make in the now moment. It's free to do dot, dot, dot. These can be anything you want to put in for yourself. Free to do, free to be, free to experience. What's holding you back from those experiences? You are. You've made that choice for that to happen. Nobody else, nobody to blame, no VV game. It's not him, her, that job, this place, this relationship. It's me. The choice is my, for me, free to be all that is me. All, my multidimensional, me is almost like multidimensional experience. That's what M-E is, me. And knowing myself in my multidimensional experience, what am I free to do? Everything, if I choose to. What am I free to be? Everything. What am I free to experience? Everything. Because the hologram is meant to be joyous, and it's a choice. So if we make that choice, we can change everything. Because we're the creator of that choice. So if you're holding yourself in chains, you're the person who's holding yourself in the chains. And the only way to break through the chains is to allow yourself the space of freedom and joy. Because we were all meant to have these experiences. When Source wanted to get to know itself, it came down to get to know itself. 
your spark of that, having the experience to send back. And we make jokes in Cathara courses about think about all the things when we talk about dinner after we finish the course. We sit around and we say, how did you get into KS and what have you been doing in this 3D lifetime? And people have amazing stories. The last group I had, somebody had lived in the Arctic. Somebody had lived with the Inuit. Somebody had traveled the world. Another person was a film director, wrote scripts, had been in New York during the 9-11 experience. I mean, people had incredible experience. And I was going, that's just this experience that we're having in this 3D here. Think about all those other experiences. But think of the experiences we can change and make right now, in the now moment, in every choice. That's an incredibly joyous space to make choices from and draw more into it. So. Mm -hmm. That's where the play for me comes in. Because if you said to a, ch a child, what would you like to do? I'd like to go out and play. They'll play, they'll experience, they'll have the freedom. We allow children that space because we want them to be free, yeah. to grow. So we can do that for our multidimensional experience so that Source has a better time, has a better joke at the end of it all, getting to know itself. You <laughs> can say, yeah, it was a good time when I look back at that. That was really good fun. <laughs> Rather than mine, that was a bit of a you know, <laughs> trip. <laughs> And sometimes it's the words. It's the words that we're using that imprisons us, that keeps us from being free. How many times have we said, I should, um, I would like to do this, but I have to do this, I have to do something else. Oh, I'd like to go uh, see a play, but I have to do. And when you start, when that play starts running in your mind, or do, do you really have to do something, or are you choosing? When you have to, it's something that have means hold. So something is holding you. You are saying that something outside yourself is causing you to do something. So when you have those words saying, yes, I would like to, but I have to, or I should do, then look and say, are you, it, are you really having to? Or do you really, sh you know, is it a should? Or are you choosing? Choosing puts you back in the driver's seat, puts you back in the point of power. Having, when you say having, it means I'm giving up my power to something or someone else. So we can choose to laugh at life. Max says, I have found that those bouts of hysterical laughter that I have upon occasions have cleared heavy, heavy energy patterns more than once. I never underestimate the power of a good laugh to heal a whole lot of things. So how do you do that? We start with us. <laughs> Absolutely, you can play that. Or you start with a smile. Or maybe a silly grin. It makes you feel good no matter the mood you're in. Chuckling, guffawing, or maybe a belly laugh. Fills the day with sunshine. It's also simple, so try it and you will see. Laughter is easy and makes you feel really free. So spread your lips, open wide, show some teeth, and then smile, grin, laugh. <laughs> it's all so simple, so no, laughter is free, yet so off seems a rarity. You would be wise to invest in hilarity. Tittering, chuckling, tort chortling. Laughter is God's love spreading sunshine. It's all so simple, so try it and you will see. Laughter is easy and makes you feel really free. So spread your lips, open wide, show some teeth. And then smile, grin, laugh. Oh, Underestimate the power of a good laugh to heal a whole lot of things. 
So let's go ahead and breathe again. And take that feeling of laughter and joy within. That's part of your consciousness. That laughter and joy is part of the Christ inside you. Part of your consciousness. Send your consciousness into the code. Expand it. And then bring the encryption back in you. And expand it as part of the joy and laughter inside. And then speak, I am this now. Be still. Be now as one with God. I am still now. I am the still point of love, joy, and laughter now. Joy and laughter. I am now as one with God. And see how you feel expanded inside from the laughter? But yet you can still feel still. And you can still feel joyous and love and be still at the same time. It's all one. So when we honor our whole being, then we again acknowledge the parts of ourselves to be what I would say is the big me rather than the little me. The sense of ourselves that knows ourselves in all, all ways. And this takes us on to another um, little space. If you just imagine that here we have somebody writing to somebody else. Take it away, Matt. Dear Krabby, I need some sage advice. My spine seems that I gets on fire with DNA activation. My shadow body is snarling at people and wants to strangle them with their interior unattached DNA strands. My head hurts. My ankles are swollen. The Jehovian seal in my left knee is, in my left knee is acting up. <laughs> and my inner brat wants nothing but chocolate. What do I do? <laughs> we honor the whole process. We don't forget <laughs> that, uh, you know, the frequencies come in and we do get crabby. My husband says, and how are you today, crabby? <laughs> and how is Miss Crab today? Um, and we need to honor that. We need to honor our body. Our body is our vehicle. It was interesting. I was reading something the other day and it said that we chose the body here in this lifetime to be the perfect body for doing our mission and bringing all our other selves together into unity, into unification. And so our body isn't something to not like. Um, a couple years ago, I went from a, um, I started having a, um, a thyroid challenge and, my, and I gained like, uh, 35, 40 pounds in a year. And, and so I went from sort of like a size 10, 12 to an 18. And I got to learn a lot about accepting my body, about uh, loving my body, that it was okay, um, because we're so caught up in appearances, into those, you know, into the mask, into, into what people expect us to look like. And, and in the process also of, of uh, our body behaves because of the distortions and the frequencies come in, um, we get crabby, we get cravings, we get to where we want to snap and strangle people. And, and, um, and, and then I find that for me, I'll run into things. I mean, you know, t for two days straight, it's like I hit my toes, I hit my knee, I hit my arm, I hit my head, to the point to, to where each time it hurts so much, I'd be there crying. And, and, and but I had the choice, you know, of, of um, yeah, I allowed myself to cry, because it was sort of like, okay, let's get this out, you know, so then I get that out, I get all those feelings out, and, 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 and there's part of me that, well, then, okay, just zap them with the Christ light, and, you know, and, and then I can get back into that, into that center uh, of, of being I am this I am, 
but it's honoring that process. We're all going through a process. Uh, we're honoring the journey. It's, it's all about the journey. It's all about the process, not about the end. Not, if, we're always, if our attention is always on where we're going, we never get there. It should be where are in the now point. And it's okay if you don't feel good at that moment. You take care of the body vehicle. You honor the whole person, the mind, the emotional body, the, the physical body. And then you do what you can to support it at that moment. And uh, it, you allow yourself to scream and cry if you need to. Just don't scream and cry at other people and take care of the energy self-containment. So if I scream and cry, I ask help from the beloveds and my Christos self to that as I'm going through this process that I release in a Christiac manner and I um, uh, transform, transmute those energies. And that allows that opening then to bring in the higher frequencies. And then I'll go into a technique or to a song to, uh, to allow the higher frequencies to come in. But, but don't get down on yourself. Don't, kick, don't, get, don't bruise yourself by kicking yourself because um, you, do, you, you have these issues. There are issues we're all working in. The whole thing is empowering yourself and making the choices to, to align yourself with the Christ and do what you need to do. Yeah, and for me, it's the attitudes and responsibilities again because there are so many areas that we can look at through those. Self-love is a big lesson that I've been learning in terms of conservation because how much you allow yourself the space of conservation to hold the frequencies is very important at this time particularly but also to allow yourself the joy because that's what cuts off the joy. I find if I'm tired, that's my point when I've been exerting too much. And it could be the shoulds and the haves and I must get this done before da, 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 creating my own deadlines, you know. But also there's appreciation that teaches us so much of what we receive and give, as does gratitude. There are so many, I think all of the attitudes and responsibilities you could look at in the framework of honoring your whole being and how each one will add something to that, the more we can bring it into ourselves. Yeah. And of course, working with the techniques, uh, uh, we'll see signs of ourselves that we never knew existed, both, both good and, not, and some not so good uh, because of, uh, of the process we're going through. And so one of the biggest things we need is to be kind to ourselves, kind and nurturing, you know, it's, it's like mothering, parenting ourselves. So exercise a little kindness and gentleness with yourselves and others. Stay detached, cordless, and just breathe. So let's go ahead and just take a deep breath and hold it. And hold it, and hold it, and hold it. And now just blow it out so you're blowing okay, everything out with it. Okay, take in one more breath. Okay, now breathe it out. And now we'll take one more breath and it will be a gentle breath in. It's like an I am love breath and then just. So we're on the road to becoming. Knowing and believing in your ancestry and multidimensional self is intrinsic to the process of becoming more of what you want and less of what you don't. It's like going back, you know how people have family, family trees. I was thinking of how people, even in this, this 3D hologram, they're tracing their own ancestry back. But when you think of the magnificence of yourself as a multidimensional being, the gestalts of consciousness that we're connected to at all times, you suddenly get a sense of how expanded your consciousness is at any given time. When you tap in, again, it goes back to the now moment, being fully present. It's also about self-actualization for me too, how self-actualized we are as beings, that we know this intrinsic process is a journey of becoming constantly. Again, in every moment, we're able to become more of who we are, the bigger me rather than the little me. And again, there's a quote here from As. 
There are ways to make progress, and these ways are those which give the non-mutated aspects of the shields opportunity, time and space to override the mutated aspects and the knee-jerk approach to life that's so deeply programmed into the shields. And that means making a conscious effort to choose differently, to choose higher, behaving differently, knowing and believing in your ancestry and multidimensional self is intrinsic to the process of becoming more of what you want and less of what you don't want. So for me, it's about love. It's about recognition of the truth of the all oneness. And it's a way that we make progress on our journey to know that self-actualization. So spiritual integrity is based on knowing oneself as a representative of source. We chose it, we came in, we had the contract, whether we remember it or not. We made that conscious decision to come here now. And we're a containment vessel of accumulating consciousness designed to harvest positive, fun-like, expansive, fearless, guilt-free, experiential interrelationships, no matter what the shape, the texture, the challenges of individual circumstances. Yeah. As uh, that was as 5 um, April 2005. April. Yeah. And we can choose to believe that we do have portions of ourselves that are valid in terms of the eternal and are the only authority that we should turn towards. It's, we don't go outside, again, it's not going outside of yourselves. It's turning to that authority within for interpretation of the reality that you see there. Again, it's going to the Christian side. So let's go ahead and project ourselves once again into the code, expand out, and then bring the encryption back into your body and expand that encryption and code within your totality of self. And that expanded self inside resonates the words that you see on the slide. I, I am, am this, this now. Be, be whole. Be, be now, now as one, one with God. God. I am whole now. I am now as one with God. Let's go ahead and sing this together. Though we all have a share of doubt and fear, there lies within us. You know, we're, I think we're on the wrong tune, and it's all my fault. I take responsibility for, for being a little low there. Though we all have... A have, thank you, our share of doubt and fear, there lies within us the courage to go on, standing proud and strong. We see the coming dawn and feel the freedom that it offers. I just want to ask everybody if you'd like to stand up and do that again, because I think there's quite a big difference. Standing in your own power mm -hmm. and really just singing that. See if it's different yeah. to sitting down, because there is a... Well, we'll try. Well, well first, first, slump. Everybody slump. How does that feel in your body? Kind of, doesn't it kind of tighten you up and kind of make you hard to breathe? Now stand up tall. Tall with the shoulders back as if... Look at world, here I am. N okay, now standing like that, now sing this. Okay, you want to give us the first line there? I, it's always hard for me to get into the middle of a song. We all have our share of doubt and fear. There lies within us the courage to go on. Standing proud and strong, we see the coming dawn and feel the freedom that it offers. Now, 
if you remember the picture of the hauteur there, there's an akasha underneath it, and there's some words. So in those words say, I am invincible. I am invincible. Yeah, by the power of my own Christos, I am invincible. By the power of my own Christos, I am invincible. I am loving. I am loving. I am enigmatic. I am noble. I am stoic. I am aware. All right. Yes. <laughs> go, go ahead and take your seats. <laughs> Pammy, next slide, please. Finding the joy, that is the most important technique we have, getting through each day with integrity. What does that mean, getting through each day with integrity? What, is, what does that mean to, to you, getting through with integrity? Can you? Right, that's, anybody else? What does getting through a day with integrity mean to you? Yeah. Like you said, it, you know. that's nice. Uh, we're in where you're saying integrity used to be trying as hard as you can and being good about trying as hard, and now it's finding that soft space within the true core of who you are and going from there. Did I get that right? And it's not easy. It's not easy, but that's but it's choice. You know, um, the things we don't do that are aligned with the crystals didn't used to be easy, but we got so used to doing them, we built a habit pattern, and now it's like a rut in the road, where that's where the wheels go because that's where the ruts are, and it's hard to to find what Robert Frost said: finding the road less traveled. Lorraine, you had something. And I think that's where we're going. It's sort of like when we say it's not easy, it's the process of becoming. And, and so we're going through the journey of the process of becoming and trying to train ourselves to the beingness part. Does that make sense to you? It's like, it's like, forgive, it's like um, uh, forgiving. It's as it's not easy. It's like it could be easy. Yeah, it is easy now. The road is easy now. Yes, I, I, I go through life with grace, joy, and it is very easy. It's training ourselves, put, it's, it's like flipping our, our minds around to, to facing the correct direction. But it's a step on the way. It's like, it's like the word forgiveness, where forgiveness means is sort of like a conditional word, but we say forgive parents, forgive self, forgive people, because it's a step on the road to allowance. Because it's very hard in our minds, we've been imprinted to get from... Uh, to get from, let's say, the hate word to get to forgiveness and then to get to allowance and flexibility and, um, and beingness. So it's just, it's, it's a step that we can aim for in order to get where we're going. I used to have, um, what's the lesson as well? That used to help me a lot. If, if it was a real challenge. What's the lesson? Okay, there must be a lesson here somewhere. It's this <laughs> challenging, you know, it's got to be. Come on. So I used to do that one. 
And that gave me a sort of observational space that I could have a look and go, whoa, and then go, thanks for the lesson. That's really great. Mm -hmm. you it's, it's, you know, that's like the old story that I guess it was that you always hear about now, but it's, it's about the, the, uh, uh, the boy that wanted a horse for Christmas, and his his parents uh, told him to go out, and, and he was he was like mucking out the uh, the barn, and he was doing it happily, and they couldn't understand why he was doing this dirty job and so happy about it, because and he says, I just know there's a pony in there somewhere, <laughs> you know. So it's 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 like what is you know it's it's what is the still point when you see all the muck out there? What is the still point that we need to be within in the middle of it all? Where, if I, as the Christos, how would I react in that moment? And I think we have different ways. I mean, I, sometimes I do the snapshot. You know, the Ashes talks about having a snapshot because it is a, hol you know, it's a hologram. It's an illusion. It's a dreamscape, all this. And sometimes I sit and I go, hey, when it's really coming there, it's there in your face. And you go, wow, let's look at the snapshot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like you would on a computer, just like you'd look at your holiday photos, mm -hmm. just like you'd relive your experience or go to that space. You can freeze that moment, even if it's coming right there. Oh, okay. So there's lots of ways to be creative, I think, for ourselves to experience those things. So let's take a breath now and take our consciousness again and send it into the code. Thank you. Well, you can stand up if you'd like and, 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 and uh, send consciousness into code. And go ahead. It's, it's okay. We're all individuals. Yeah. And, and then bring the, in, the encryption back into your body and expand it into your body. Okay, now let's all stand up and say, I am this now. I am this now. Be free. Be free. Be now as one with God. Be now as one with God. I am free now. I am free now. I am now as one with God. I am now as one with God. And take a deep breath and send it down. <laughs> Uh, Hills is um, passing out a box, and we want you to take a card from each of the box. And what these are in one box are what we call concept cards, and the other box is has A and R's in it. And uh, what we'd like you to do is like look at it and maybe uh, dwell or or meditate or just um, uh, have some sensing about it this weekend, uh, like you could get maybe trust, and you could get laughter on another one, okay? And you could look at it and say, okay, um, can I trust myself? Maybe I need to work on trusting uh, that I can laugh at life. Maybe I can trust that laughing is always appropriate. I was always one because I have this weird laugh that uh, I learned to tone it down and not laugh uh, because people always thought it was inappropriate. And, uh, and they're all we, and so I would allow myself to kind of come out of the closet with the laughter, and then, and then I'd get this frown, you know, then I'd, so I'd go back in. So it took me a long time to be able to actually get out and laugh. So, um, so it's, it, it, it acts as, as, um, as maybe something that you can look at this weekend and, uh, and dwell on to see where is that aspect in your life and is it aligned with the uh, attitude and responsibility that you picked. You also have these in a smaller version as part of your handouts so that you can make your own cards. You know, like we used to do with the angel cards, you pick one for the day. What attitude, what concept do I need to work on today? Or do, you know, and I used to do it with my left hand so that my um, inner self would be picking it. And I could see, okay, what do I need? To, uh, oh, integrity, okay. And I would look at myself, am I, as I went throughout the day, am I in integrity? Am I out of integrity? In, in, am I aligned with my Christ? Am I bringing that Christ into my every day, into every step of, of my walk that day? And so it's a way for, for kind of like a remembrance, uh, a jog of the memory, a jog of like, ah, oh, okay. 
maybe I need to look at this. So it's, 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 it's kind of a tool you can use, um, and you can probably think of lots of other ways to, to use it. Because when we start looking at, at parts of, of the attitudes and parts of our lives and how they align, you know, it's one of the hardest things is to own your own stuff, is to be in the middle of an argument and back off and say, you know, that's my stuff. And no one can make you do or feel anything unless you give them permission. Um, my mom used to quote Eleanor Roosevelt when she said, no one can make you feel bad about yourself unless you give them permission. Okay, you have the choice how you want to respond. You know, when someone says something, my, I used to have uh, someone that used to always say, you're weird. And, and I used to say, no, I'm not weird. You know, I'd get that. And then I, and then I started thanking them. I'd say, thank you. I'm glad I'm weird because it means I'm not like anybody else. And weird means wise in some of the old languages. So, yes. So I took it as a point of honor when someone called me weird. Thank you. Thank you. And they'd say, don't say thank you. And I'd go, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and another thing is, you know, when, you, when, you, uh, uh, when people say something, and, and maybe in the past you used to kind of, you could say, you know, I choose not to engage with you. I have no argument with you. And you have the right to turn around and walk away. And, and we're, we're trained that, that you don't walk away or stuff because it might make them feel bad. Well, why would it make them feel bad? They have the choice whether they want to make feel bad or not. You have the choice to own your own power. And when it doesn't feel right to be in a situation, to turn around and walk away. To turn around and walk. Turn, you know, it's like turning your face in the sunshine. Turn towards the joy and the laughter, not to where someone wants to make you feel badly over here. Turn towards the joy and laughter. Self-containment. Directing your personal energies where you want them to go. Yeah. So points to remember, masters enjoy life no matter what the drama might be. They have a fearless attitude, which we've talked about before. They're not afraid of anything. And they're the directors, you know, of the game. If you choose to be, you can choose to be the director. You're the actor too. You're everything in your own film, movie, hologram. So there's a lot of power in that point of, of enjoying life, making it a pleasurable experience for source to get to know itself. As long as you're responsible and doing and know you're doing what you can with your own fields, you know you're creating your own safety. You're out of the fear mode at that time. You don't have to be afraid of anything. And the key is fun. And it's so contagious. I always, I always thought that it'd be kind of fun to like be on the Johnny Carson show or one of those late night shows and be the plant in the audience that starts laughing at all the jokes. You know, because laughter is contagious. <laughs> when people laugh, you can't help smiling. There's in um, one of the Eastern religions, they actually had, there's a, um, a way to enlightenment is through laughter. Yeah, see, and, and, uh, and Max says, she says there's, you know, there's no difference between laughter and love. It's the same frequency. And uh, when they were in Morocco and, uh, and the tax were coming in, she went around and told everybody, laugh, laugh. It increases the frequency. When Pammy and I were teaching, um, all of a sudden we could feel stuff coming in. And we had this uncontrollable urge to laugh. We didn't know why. We just started laughing. We started giggling. And then we realized what was happening. It increases the frequency. And uh, even if you don't feel like laughing, you know if you start, you can't help but continue. And even if you smile, they've shown that when you smile, the act of smiling actually increases those feel-good endorphins in your brain. So, yeah, even doing this. Uh huh. And it's like if you say things with a smile on your face, it's different. It's like that Charlie Brown cartoon. There's a cartoon of him, and it's that physical. It's just like the body. So you know, it's the, like you. If you prefer to stand and do stuff, do that. Open. Mm -hmm. It's like a surya on your face. You know, it's kind of a little <laughs> dance thing. Going on. <laughs> and eyebrows. You know, yeah. face. You've got more muscles in your face than any other part of your body. 
So the expression of joy, so it can be seen. Absolutely. Is that mm-hmm. true? Is Absolutely. That oh, yeah. Yeah, great. So we, um, th- these were things that we had learned back in the dance floor programs. And they're the 12 actions of mastery. And, and there's a copy of them in your handouts. And uh, we're, we're not really doing the miage field uh, or the triumph field exercises anymore. But what the miage field is the sound field. And what we started doing uh, later on was actually using the akasha. Uh, inducting the akasha or bringing that uh, in order for um, uh, to help heal the miage field and the uh, trion is your light fields and so you can use the veca codes so or any of the other codes essentially to help heal uh, the different aspects and the different layers of your biofields uh, the IAEA code induction uh, that was, or you can use any of the codes, but it's like, it's like making a consistent use of and getting to know the consciousness that are the codes. Uh, the use of uh, tangible structure of the soul, texts, uh, uh, techniques. Oh, I, I missed the Song of Lyra. That, and the, when you sing the Song of Lyra, it automatically brings up the Maharic Shield after you've done the Maharic Shield exercises for several times. The use of the tangible structure of the soul. And so we're talking about going back and connecting to the Rishi. So making the connection stronger to the God Seed, making those connections stronger, uh, working with um, do, maybe doing some spinning and the, the Merkaba breathing exercises to start calling in on the, on the tonal names, the Hala, the Quatra, all those levels of the uh, parts of the Merkaba to start them uh, activating to uh, there's a, a clearing of the crystal body uh, exercise in there that's a really good one too for for working on uh, miasm so it's a, it's still we still recommend it very highly to people or just making um, a if you've done that and you don't want to go towards that making some use of consist of consistent techniques in your life the cardiovascular exercise that uh, stretching I mean I, I I'm one that that has to stretch in order to get out of bed um, and so I do a lot of stretches and um, because that otherwise the energy, the frequency coming in gets blocked up. And so in the cardiovascular exercise will give you more stamina for holding the breast, make you a better and a greater holder of frequency. Paying attention to your body. Remember we talked about the whole person. Honor the body. See what you're putting into the body, and uh, and what are you taking into the body? Listening to the body. I I will be eating something, and I'll have a whole plate of food, and I'll ask my body, no, I can't have any more. And I've learned to push it away. I was brought up to where you had to finish your plate. And so learning to push the food away, and what I'm finding too that if I don't push it away after my body has said my body likes to go purge it, now you know, and so. Um, it's very hard to tell my husband, say, I'll be right back. So I run to the bathroom. Um, uh, and so it's, it's uh, to honor the body. It, it's taught me greatly to listen to what my body consciousness is saying. Uh, the soda or salt bath, or if you don't have a bathtub, just a shower, doing a foot soak with, uh, with sea salt and some, and some baking soda, bicarbonate of soda. How much for just feet if you're just doing I'd say just a, just a handful or two. I, I, you know, it's your own self what you need you know and and so I tend to go I tend to do like like okay that's good this okay that's good you know or or what I could do like this oh that's good you know I don't go and say okay I need exactly a quarter cup of this and I need exactly two and three quarters teaspoons of this no I just go okay a daily work consciously to explore integrate and develop greater understanding of the 12 attitudes of mastery So where next? After millions of years, it is the final curtain. This is what we do, so where do we go next? I'm sure that somewhere there is another galaxy where the freedom teachings are needed and we will all show up again a little smarter next time. (laughs) I know, I want to really look at the contract next time. (laughs) Find you the fine print, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's right. That's right. Next one. Mm-hmm. 
Love and laughter heals all. So let's go ahead and, and sing this. It's always, again, it's a challenge for me to get in the middle of the song. No, you're strong enough to play it all once again. It's funny when you look back and see the comic tragedies that you live through and love through so many memories but it's sad when you're on the stage again and none of the lines can seem to take away the pain remember now what love can do it helps a soul to get you through so you can laugh once again at life's illusions love helps you laugh once again at life's illusions <laughs> love and laughter heals all so let's go ahead and again project ourselves into the code And then bring the encryption back into your body. And expand it out. <clears throat> so let's start with the be still and say it. Be still. Be now as one with God. Be joy. Be now as one with God. Be love. Be now as one with God. Be peace, be now as one with God. Be whole, be now as one with God. Be free, be now as one with God. I am this now, I am. And um, we actually are, are kind of singing this with a tune now. It's on the, um, uh, the new CD, the Prayers for River Harmonies. So let's go ahead and, and sing it. And those that don't know it, you, um, you can listen and join in. When it, um. Be still, be now as one with God. Be joy, be now as one with God. Be love, be now as one with God. Be now as one with God, be whole, be now as one with God, be free, be now as one with God. I am, I am this now, I am, I am. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in laughter and in love. Please take it with you and carry it at all times.